So let's take a look at our first application of the offset formula. Now the first example we've got is fairly straightforward, just going to involve a single formula. And what we've got is a, de uh, a table of information here, uh, two columns, and we can see it contains some data about Tiger YouTube videos, just, just fictional data. But what we're looking to do is in this area, we're looking to change the day and for this cell to display the number of views for that day. Now that could be quite useful because we've got one figure for every day of the year. So this table goes really far off to the right and it would be really annoying to have to scroll across to retrieve that information every time. So we can use the offset formula here to save us a lot of, the, a lot of time, just instantly take a piece of information that's miles away uh, in the spreadsheet. Now you may think with this kind of setup, we've got a table. You may think, well, we could just use a, a lookup formula to do that, an H lookup formula. It's not gonna be possible in this case uh, because the day uh, which we would use um, in the lookup formula is in the bottom row of the table. To use an H lookup formula, that would have to be in the top row. So it shows it's really beneficial to have a range of possible approaches uh, for approaching this kind of problem. So how would we set up the offset formula? We can see it here. I'll just show it working. If I put three there, it shows 890. That's because there's 890 views in day three. So let's uh, delete the formula. Let's see how we'd put it together. So as always, equals offset. And then we can see the five things that Excel wants. So it wants five different components. First, it wants a reference. So that's our anchor cell. Remember offsets, um, a better term to use would be move away from. And we're gonna take a reference, an anchor point, and then move away from that point, a certain number of cells, and return the value of the cell that we get to. That's the basic idea. So we have a reference, an anchor point, then we're gonna move a certain number of rows down, certain number of columns across, and then we can also make reference to height and width, but we're not gonna worry about that in this video, we are in the next video. So for the purposes of this formula, we need the first three, only the first three elements, the reference, the anchor point, the rows and the columns. So what's the reference gonna be? Well, um, the, the leftmost point uh, of the table, um, of, the of the row of the table that contains the data we're trying to return is the best place to start. And then comma, and we can see Excel is asking for the next element of the formula. So it's saying, how many rows down do you want me to move away to get to this cell? And uh, we don't want to move any rows up or down because the data is in a row. So we can just set that to zero, nice and easy. And then finally, columns, the important part. So this controls how far across the spreadsheet we're going to go. So what, what are we gonna do there? We could, could put a number in there and that would return some information, but it would be static. The number, uh, the formula wouldn't update when the user updates the day. So just think what information could we use on the spreadsheet in the formula to make it dynamic, to make that information update every time the user changes the day. Or maybe you got it, we can refer to this, this cell because this cell contains the data about the day that the user has selected. So we should be good to go there. We've got our three elements, our anchor point, which is um, the beginning of the table. We don't need to move any rows down and we want to move the value in C8 columns across, in this case, three. Okay, we can close the bracket just hit enter and let's see what happens. Okay, as usual, haven't quite got it right first time, but it looks like I've chosen the wrong anchor cell because Excel is returning um, the value three. So I think I've chosen the wrong reference point and I should go one row higher. Just double click. Yeah, I can see I haven't quite got the reference point right. So I can just move that up um, and the edit's done. And that looks good. Okay, so it's saying day three, 890 views. That sounds good, let's try day one, 864 views, and let's go further down. Let's try day 25, looking for 811 views, day 25. Okay, good. So that's um, a simple application of the offset formula. Uh, we've used it there with a table of data uh, to speed up what might be a real kind of time-consuming time consuming and annoying task. It's also the kind of thing we might try to do uh, with a lookup formula, but in this case, uh, we can't use a lookup formula because of the way the data is set up. So it's an illustration of why it's a good idea to know lots of possible approaches to solving this kind of problem. In, in the next video, we're gonna move on. I'll just make reference to the formula 
again. Um, so we mentioned the, the first three elements, but in the next video, we're going to move on and think about the next two elements, the height and width elements of the offset formula. Really powerful, helps us to get really cool things done in Excel. See you in the next video.